Thanks for staying with us. It's time now to review the papers and see what uh, made it to the headlines of some of our uh, national dailies. We'll be looking at the Business NG this morning. We'll also be looking at the Punch, uh, Daily Trust, and um, Nature newspaper. Let's see what the headlines are in any of, or each of these newspapers. Well, let's begin with the Business NG. The business NG leads with uh, Dangote Refinery, oh, sorry, Old Generation Bank's Jitri as CBN targets dormant accounts. CBN targets dormant accounts. Uh, I, I don't know uh, what makes an account dormant. Some people say it's um, an account that has not been, has not seen any activity for the last six months and all that. So we don't know whether some other things are done to find out why these uh, accounts have not seen any activity in the last six months. Maybe you just have a little cover here and there and you want to leave it there and concentrate on other things that you're doing or something. Uh, maybe you don't really have anything to add to it, but you don't want to remove whatever small amount of money you have inside there enough to close the account or uh, withdraw it or send it to somewhere else. Well, um, we're being joined by Mr. Tunde Kolawole to uh, look at these papers with us. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Kolawole. Good morning, my brother. Mm. For a moment... Hope you had a great night. Yeah, I did. Uh, for a moment there, we thought that you uh, weren't uh, going to join us. We were glad that you're here right now. Uh, let's begin with Business NG. Uh, old Generation Banks, I just read that now. G3, uh, CBN Targets Dormant Accounts. Uh, okay, so tell, me, tell us what you, you know about this and what you think about uh, uh, this new target on dormant account by CBN. Well, honestly speaking, um, it's a problem of the monetary policy of the present government is very, very worrisome. Uh, worrisome in the sense that uh, you cannot go and uh, start uh, confiscating people's money, put in a bank without their consent. There is a contract between the bank and those who put the money there. And the federal government it's not a party to that contract. If they are not a party to the contract, how will we not begin to take benefit of such a contract? This attempt to confiscate uh, some monies in the scope of the month account is not different from the move they have been making to start using pensioner funds uh, to run the government. It is never done. Just like the pensioners' fund, it's a contract between the government or between the employers and the employees as regards those pension funds. And if such funds are going to the third party, it must be done with the consent of the owners of the pension and that of the government account. What is a guarantee? that when people need this money, then they will be able to have access to it. I'm told they want to use it to buy bonds, treasury bills, and war you. you know? What is the worth of most of those treasury bills and bonds that are today with the hyperinflation that we have in the country? Honestly speaking, the government should stay away from so-called government accounts and pensioners uh, funds. These are savings made by certain public uh, with the view that sometimes they may need such savings and then they will have access to it. We don't start forcing people to do certain things they are not uh, planned uh, to do. It is worse than printing money which some past governments have been accused of this in the country today. Mm. Okay, um, Dangote refinery crisis sanctions loom. Uh, that's uh, another headline there on page 11 is where that story is. 
Dangote refinery, we've seen all the drama that's going on. Uh, some, in some quarters, some people are being exposed, some others are defending themselves, some are challenging here and there, and we don't even know what is happening. Some experts have come out to say Dangote must be protected because of what uh, he's been doing and uh, how much he's contributing to employment in Nigeria and um, every other sector of our economy. And then this is happening. So what do you think about the drama going on as Dangote uh, tries to uh, reach optimal pr production in his refinery? Uh, honestly speaking, the tango between Dangote refinery and the regulatory authorities is, to say the least, very, very embarrassing. I would think that before Mr. Dangote is allowed to build a refinery, the do's and don'ts of running a refinery would have been spread out to him. Furthermore, there, be some, there would have been some agreement between the regulatory authorities and then the Dangote refinery. What are some of the things that we are now seeing here coming from the regulatory authorities? but not to be coming from them. Say, for example, the accusation of monopoly. Say, for example, the accusation of high sulfur in the Zangote product can what I do. One would think that kind of accusation, that kind of allegation, ought not to be coming from the regulatory authority, especially if the state administration of the effort that have been put into that the finally and the inability of the federal government, of the state government, and some of the people that have been given license to build refineries in the past, which they have not been able to do. If the federal government has four refineries and they have been unable to run it, and an individual now come on screen, build the refinery, and you are now raising all these and cry, all manners of allegations that are neither here nor there. Then uh, something uh, uh, very strange is happening. It is either people are not being honest with the Nigerian people, or that the people who have been benefiting from the exportation of the fleet products and export of food products are not ready to give out that business because it's a highly lucrative system and they're not ready to give it up. Honestly speaking, that crisis has been our lot since I think about 1972. And if somebody has had the courage to do what can go to stop, the onus lies on the government, on the regulatory authority, to rally around him to solve whatever problem you might be encountering in running that refinery and not for the regulatory authority to start the kind of allegation uh, that they have been making. With the international community, is also falling. Then we must remember that Angota borrowed money from Nigerian banks, from outside Nigeria, to build that refinery. If we now begin to raise this kind of issue and the refinery cannot operate or function optimally, how does he repay back the loan that has been taken? If he's unable to repay back those loans, what is going to be the implication on the financial institutions of the Nigerian banks that have loaned Dangote the money to build that refinery? Whichever you way you look at it, what is happening between the Regulatory Authority and Nangotel Refinery is not tidy at all. The accusation of monopoly is totally impossible in the sense that so many other individuals and companies have been given licenses to build refinery and they are building it. They are aware that Bua is building the refinery somewhere in the Niger Delta. They are also aware of some other efforts of modular refineries that have been built. 
Some other people have also been licensed to build refineries. That was monopoly come into that. So the appeal will be to the federal government to please whatever issues may have, they may have with Tangata refinery. It should address the problem very quietly and allow that refinery to function in the interest of the Nigerian people. We have suffered, or the country has suffered for too long, and not justifiably with regards to fuel and energy supply in this country. Okay. Um Reps order NEC this coast to reverse a band A tariff hike is another story. Uh, they're still on the business NG. Band A people mm. are, are crying, uh, you know, that uh, not only is there no lights, no 20 hour lights as they were promised, but the tariff is so neck breaking that a lot of people have even resorted to going back to generator. So it's not serving the mm. purpose. Mm. It's uh, a serious matter. Honestly speaking, like we said on this program before, the banding of electricity supply is all constitutional. It is discriminatory. And the law seriously found as that kind of discrimination. If the House of Commissioner takes step to compare the discourse to revise, to revise, the so-called banding of electricity supply, I would think it is a welcome development. It is a development that is in tandem with the loss of the land, with the constitution, and with France as discriminatory practices by either individuals, businesses, or government. But what, is, what surprises me is that uh, instead of the the National Assembly talking about this uh, discrimination. They are talking about reversing the tariff of Band A, uh, which a lot of people will think that includes them because they may be t staying in choice areas that will be enjoying Band A. They are not talking about the discrimination against Nigerians, where you are you are selecting some people to put them on Band A, some on Band B, and some on Band C, uh, see if they don't matter. Uh, I thought the National Assembly should be addressing this and saying they should reverse these bans uh, in the first place. But now they're talking about reversing the tariff of Band A alone. So I don't know yeah, what's uh, really yeah. going on. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with you. Uh, whichever way one looks at it and all that, this band of electricity tariff is uh, not tidy at all. It's not a thing that should be happening in Nigeria or in any society for that matter. What you are simply saying is that certain person, like you have pointed out, really don't matter. Why the National Assembly is not looking at it the way we are looking at it? It's the equally thing to me. There may be some other information that are made available to them, which is not available to us. But whichever way we look at it, I recollect the Minister of Power saying that except the discourse are allowed to ban the electricity tariff, the nation should be ready for total blackout. And uh, you ask yourself, what is so difficult about electricity supply? Just like uh, the petroleum issues that we talk about that cannot be resolved. It is just that the political will seems not to be there. It is just that the discourse of the power sector has been sold to people who don't seem to have the expertise to run that um, uh, business. It's also that uh, the federal government is not ready to see the bull at the horn in terms of the energy needs of the country. I have said times it has number that if you have a rich country like Nigeria with a 200 million people and more than you cannot depend on this small, small power plant, on this small, small dam that you have all over the country. You will need to be, you will need to invest 
the nuclear energy to be able to power the energy needs of the country. We also require to do massive investments in solar power supply, just like it is did, now to be able to address the nation's energy needs. Gone are the days. At the time we built some of those uh, dams, what was the population of the country? Less than 100 million. And you are looking at a population that is likely to double in the next 60 years. So if we are futuristic, you will have a holistic focus to address the challenge of power supply in the country. But there's something that is of interest to me. I noticed that uh, immediately the white people left South Africa. The black Africans that took over the reign of government, that took over power, have also not been able to meet the energy needs for the South African people. When you also go to some of the black nations around the world, they are the ones facing acute power and supply. They are also the ones that are unable to manage their weight. And you begin to ask yourself, is there something about energy supply, about weight management, that we blacks have not been able to develop the requisite skills to be able to manage? Well, the answer is in the air, left to the black scientists and thinkers all over the world to address. But it is a shame. Just like Mr. President Sarah has said, they are unable to generate sufficient light or energy for ourselves. We are unable to produce sufficient petroleum products to be able to run our plants, our vehicles, and other domestic appliances. It, it's not an idea at all. It's a shame. Very big shame. On all of us all. Really big shame. Um, so we have this one, nationwide protest, SGF ministers hold emergency meeting today. Tinubu urges youth, that's on the Punch newspaper, Tinubu urges youths to shelve August 1 rally. Atiku LP caution against protesters arrest. Egbeto Kun warns anti-government protesters, says Nigeria hasn't uh, recovered from NSARS. Uh, we've seen all this and then we are seeing uh, people from the presidency th threatening Nigerians uh, if they hold this uh, rally or this uh, protest they're going to meet with stiff resistance and all that we we can quote a lot of people who have said that in the presidency and others are instead of proffering solution are blaming it on the opposition and saying these are people who failed in the last election that are instigating the people to protest as if the reality on ground speaks otherwise. Mm. Uh, when you look at uh, the constitution, I think it's section 40 of the that talks about freedom of association and war and war. In those sections, it's obvious that uh, protest, rallies, strife, that is withdrawal of labor by employees. Is an inalienable right. It's a right take it to fundamental human rights, which the government cannot take away from its uh, citizens and all other. So rather than threatening Nigerians, rather than saying Nigerians should not be part of strike, what the government should relate to in conjunction with the security forces, is to provide protection to those who want to protest, map out the protest routes to them, and then ensure that food laws do not hijack the protest. Recollect that in 2012, the people in power today organized very, very massive protests against the government of uh, Togu Lord Jonathan. In fact, of Togu Lord Jonathan threatening anybody or arresting any of them. In fact, President Muhammad Buhari personally led 
some of those uh, protests and demonstrations also recollect that uh, some of the protests ended up in court. There is a particular case of the president of police and the ANPP, which was a government, I mean, which was a political party, under which the president Buhari confessed the president at that point time. And the court of appeal ruled that the Nigerian people have an inalienable right to protest, to withdraw their neighbor, neighbor power, if they feel aggrieved about any policies of the government. It's outside the making of law, protests and rallies, and withdrawal of neighbor is about the most essential uh, power given to ordinary citizens to draw the attention of the government to where the shoe is uh, pinching them. So it is strange that people are themselves employed or use the tools of protest, of strife, of violence, to now be the one threatening and asking citizens not to use the tools they have themselves heavily used in the past. I would say the police should flee because they are also part of uh, the suffering land. They buy from the same market, like the ordinary uh, organizer. They buy from the same market, like the ordinary pure water orca. But rather than brutalizing or making it impossible for the ordinary citizens to protest, they should rather provide protection for the citizens so that the protests could go on peacefully all over the country. Mm. Okay. Um, finally, the, the Senate or the National Assembly has approved uh, the um, 70,000 Naira. The president sent the bill to them and the same day they, they read it three times and then passed it into law. Uh, well, it's awaiting the president's consent, um, assent rather. Uh, so will this bring to end the, the problems of NLC and the government? Mm. <laughs> Honestly speaking, no one would have expected this that uh, the National Assembly they also passed a law approving 70,000 naira per month as their own wages and emolument. <laughs> if they do this, they will take them very, very serious. If a member of the National Assembly, Senator Ndumek, could come at Opole and say 70,000 naira is not enough uh, to buy a bag of rice. Why would the National Assembly be approving 70,000 naira as a minimum wage for the entire country? I don't know whether you also got the news during the week that a member of the House of Representatives bought a brand new car for a secondary daughter, school daughter. But just graduated mm. from secondary school mm. and presented the car to her. These are some of the things that the ordinary worker will see, that the ordinary Nigerian people will see, and then begin to doubt the sincerity of government and the ability to pay more than 70,000 naira as minimum uh, wage, wage in the face of the challenge, excruciating suffering that the Nigerian people are, are facing. Why is it difficult for the National Assembly to raise whatever the exact term of government as they propose? Because the law allows them to do that. We would have expected them to jack it up, if not at least to what labor is expecting, for at least something like uh, 100,000, between 100,000 and 150,000 Because 
some of the people in the National Assembly, their dogs are not that domestic animal. Spend more than 70,000 naira in a month of feeding outside veterinary services that are provided for their dogs, for their horses, okay. and not that domestic animal. Well, it's just unfortunate. Um, they, even the senators, some of them, uh, one of them said that um, the money they are being paid is not enough, so they should be doing it as part-time uh, work and all that. But uh, that story for another day, uh, what uh, um, Oji Ozokalu said. Well, we'd like to thank you, Mr. Kolawole, for coming on the show this morning and uh, uh, giving us your thoughts on some of these headlines. Thank you so much.